with industry peers this September in New Delhi. Register now. In partnership with CNBC TV 18. After intense speculation and several permutations and combinations of what a likely deal between Microsoft and Yahoo would look like, the news is that they've combined their search engine capabilities. So while Bing will power search for both companies, Yahoo will handle ad sales and will save or is expected to save nearly $250 million annually. In India, search is a 400 crore rupee ad business with Google commanding nearly all of it. Sana Vishwanath reports that though advertisers welcome a strong competitor to Google, a shuffle in ad revenues is not on the cards, at least not yet. When Bing launched two months ago, it was clearly Microsoft's attempt to get a foothold in the $35 billion search engine category globally. Bing's earlier avatars, MSN Search.com and Live.com, had failed to create any impact. At the Khan Lions this year, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer said that Bing would pioneer voice and video recognition among other technologies over the next few years. With the Yahoo tie-up, Bing's market share has jumped from 12.1% to nearly 30% in the US. India, though, is Google's stronghold. The search titan has a market share of 81% compared to Bing and Yahoo's 12%. The companies are hoping that with less fragmentation, advertisers will bid for more keywords and place more ads on their platform. Google runs a good shop, but if you want to really talk about uh, getting more uh, consumer-friendly or advertiser-friendly deals, or whether it's the bid words, or just the entire norms which are put for us to do any kind of search engine marketing, um, or for that matter search engine optimization, which is also going to become a big factor from time in days to come. Uh, that is a role where I think, uh, of course, Yahoo has historically been, I think, more advertising friendly, advertiser friendly than maybe a whole lot of other digital players. So I expect that um, in the search area at least, they will look for more advertiser friendly solutions. Yahoo tried very hard to have an automated ad sales platform, like Google has AdWords, and Yahoo tried to launch Panama, and it was not successful at doing that. Microsoft has a platform that is better than Panama but not as good as Google's. It's called, uh, you know, uh, it's the Microsoft uh, Advertising Network platform. So they will launch that as a self-service platform. So finally, AdWords will get a little bit of competition in India, right? It's not really going to affect uh, the large, uh, you know, advertisers very much. Though search accounts for most of the 700 crore rupee digital ad spends in India, experts say the future is in online videos and social networking, both of which are expected to see a quantum leap in growth of over 100% in the next three years. Though Microsoft has a presence in the social networking space with Facebook, with only 2.5 million users, it is minuscule compared to the 16.5 million that Google's Orkut commands. In online videos, it is again Google's YouTube that leads the pack. The big new frontiers, I believe, will be that social networking will start getting 50, 80, 100 crores in the next couple of years. And videos will start getting that kind of money. Simply because if you look at the numbers that you see on television and some numbers you see on online videos, it's at, least, at least you're going to start seeing YouTube usage being larger than that of any English television channel. The Microsoft Yahoo deal may not lead to a change in online media plans, but that hasn't stopped Google from ramping up its innovations. It is developing a new search infrastructure project codenamed Caffeine that could change the way companies rank in its search results. If Microsoft and Yahoo are hoping to create a tectonic shift in the search engine industry, it will have to do one better. In Mumbai, Sana Salam Vishwanath. And now, we're not the only people who noticed Cadbury Dairy Milk's Pehli Tariq campaign. Nestle's Munch did too, and clearly the brand couldn't resist taking a pot shot. We think it's opportunistic, but clever, although we're not sure of what strategic benefits this advertising will have for Munch. But what the heck, it's fun. <laughs> Nestle 
JWT Delhi is the agency behind it and though we got a reaction for you, this reaction is cautious and diplomatic at best. Thankfully, advertising has no such restrictions. The creative strategy really is, uh, is something which is based on the proposition that you, uh, you tend to, uh, or you want to really, you know, uh, communicate. And, uh, and in this case, the proposition was uh, clearly the affordability aspect of Munch and, uh, and uh, that's what uh, the communication, uh, you know, so the creative strategy wrote itself on the one of the brand pillars which is uh, the affordability and easy available availability and you can you can uh, you know enjoy this great chocolatey uh, munch experience uh, nestle munch experience whenever you want to wherever you want to and you can take a look at that and everything else on storyboard at your own pace log on to storyboard.in.com this week i recommend you head straight to the vintage section and take a look at a special show we created in 2007 to celebrate 60 years of india's independence it's a great watch and you'll see all the brands we think help build india today from the iits to Bata to Maggie to Lyril, do log on, I promise you will enjoy it. Also the spread of the H1N1 virus is scary. Don't panic but be safe. You'll find a link on storyboard.in.com that tells you about the precautions, alerts and anything you need to stay on top of this. It's a special initiative of in.com. We'll see you next week. Storyboard brought to you by the advanced K-series engines from Marty Suzuki. Idea. On Storyboard this week, meet Ogilvy's Gen Next, Tata Docomo, the latest telecom brand in town, and the impact of the Yahoo Microsoft deal on the online ad business. There's more on storyboard, including shot spot and notice board, but first some agency news that's made the industry sit up and take notice. After 14 years of leading Ogilvy's creative force, Ogilvy chairman and creative director Piyush Pandey has appointed Rajiv Rao and Abhijit Avasti as national creative directors. In case you're wondering what Piyush will do next, well, he's still going to be there leading the way. Shweta Sriram reports on what is a very big change. <music> कुछ खास है पीयूष में। Both in India and abroad, Piyush Pandey needs no introduction in advertising circles, and neither does his work. After creating memorable campaigns such as these, the creative head of arguably India's most creative agency is handing over the reins to the next generation. Though he will continue as the executive chairman and creative director of Ogilvy South Asia and of course be the guiding light at Ogilvy India, he believes the time has come for a fresher, younger Ogilvy. The responsibility given to both Rajiv and Abhijit is to make sure that every discipline of ours is as creatively charged up as we have been over the last 15 years and uh, to make sure that our clients get the best of all the changes that are happening. They are the people who are in touch with the younger people of today, not me. Uh, so they will be able to get more talent in, which is uh, younger and uh, they know about them. So I think it helps in every which way. Abhijit and Rajiv have never worked together, at least not formally. Abhijit Avasti is best known for his work on Fevicol, Bajaj and Perfetti. And Rajiv Rao's claim to fame is Vodafone, or Hutch or Orange as it was known earlier. Vodafone is one of Ogilvy's biggest clients and brings in a substantial amount of the agency's revenues. The agency's other top businesses include Unilever, ITC, Cadbury and Asian Paints. Abhijit and Rajiv's new portfolios will mean that they will now be responsible for all of Ogilvy's accounts rather than a few select brands. Currently, Ogilvy India has over 200 companies on its client roster. Their new roles also mean that creative supervision will extend across all divisions of the agency, including the out-of-home and digital areas. We don't plan to have any formal division of roles. Uh, both of us, the whole idea of bringing, I think, both of us together is that we can give our combined inputs into uh, across brands. 
and so you know we will be uh, involved in most of the stuff together of course there will be some brands on which each of us is a little more hands on uh, like i think vodafone's already got a great thing going it will be foolish for me to try and you know do my to put in my two bits over there uh so the, the idea is to uh, you know use each other strengths uh, wherever necessary it's a huge shift from what i've been doing um yeah. first of all um we we are responsible not just for a couple of brands but um, the entire ogilvy india so that uh, and pl- that to across all all divisions of of uh, ogilvy um the digital outdoor um you know so all that so uh, so that that's that's a big big uh, shift from what we've been doing so far the new national creative directors will be based out of mumbai and will work very closely with the regional creative leaders malvika mera and amita kali in bangalore suresh babu in chennai ajay gelot in delhi and shrimanto chatopadhyay who looks after calcutta a big motive behind the change of guard is to create a younger livelier creative charge which the agency hopes will reflect in its output so unconventional thinking is going to be encouraged and pushed even and the primary task will be acquisition of talent i think uh, the biggest challenge is to attract people uh, what differentiates ogilvy uh, from our competitors is that we have always had a team a team which is not dependent on one person and i think that spirit they have to carry forward and bring in more fresh talent so there are more abhijits and more shumantos and more rajiv rao's and more malus and amits and ajay gelots that uh, we have so that we have the option like uh, once upon a time australia used to have that th- those sitting on the benches were as good as the ones who are playing the game acquiring business will naturally be important but the belief is that if a wider variety of sectors retail for example comes into ogilvy skitty it will open up a lot more opportunities for better work on the awards front ogilvy has remained on top of the charts in india though the agency picked up the maximum awards at the abbeys in both 2008 and 2009 the agency was mildly sidestepped the past two years at khan where jwt emerged the clear number one but for regilvi this is not a matter of concern i think we are doing fine i mean uh, as far as the creative output of the agency is concerned we are doing fantastic work in fact this year has been one of the best years for us so we we've, we've just been doing better and better so we don't believe and don't believe that we are you know anywhere behind uh, uh, any other agency Even as Ogilvy India is ready for the future the Ogilvy group is going through changes the agency David has been resurrected and it's servicing Dabur's new shampoo brand Total Protect the idea is to accommodate a lot more brands seeking the Ogilvy expertise Rajiv Rao and Abhijit Avasti will not be involved in David or in Ogilvy's second agency Meridian and as the duo embarks on its new innings here's a tip from the mentor that your style don't follow mine <laughs> Uh, here's wishing Abhijit Raji Piyush and of course Ogilvy all the very best. On Shotspot this week Lindy Stout has picked a commercial for McDonald's made by DDB Chicago. Let's find out why. Canadian director Tim Godsell supersizes the almighty french fry and DDB Chicago's latest output for McDonald's. when you have the hope and then the deprivation of french fries i had on the show it's getting crowded out there as another telecom brand hits the airwaves 
impacted the global solar market. We have for certain slowed down our expansion plans. You were very excited about home entertainment. How's that business turned out for you? Biggest challenge India has got is, is very, very widely spread piracy. Another new business, and that really is the consumer durables business. Is it worth all the effort? If you're going to service the third largest market in the world, I believe it is worth it. Catch Ratul Puri on India Inc. Generation Next, coming soon, only on CNBC TV 18. Tata Docomo is the latest telecom brand to launch in Mumbai. Even with all India mobile subscribers growing by 48% year on year as of June, the number of brands in the space is growing and it's getting very competitive. With most of them offering similar benefits, it will be a struggle to retain market share. Shweta Shriram reports on the challenges before new entrants as well as the well entrenched brands. <laughs> After launching in Kerala in June, India's newest telecom brand Tata Docomo is making its way across the country. Tata Teleservice Maharashtra launched the service in Mumbai last week with a large media splash. The 11th telecom brand in the country is relying on the Tata name and the new billing metric, pay per second, to make its connection. The very pillar on which the product value proposition rests really is uh, pay, pay per use. We have had almost every telecom brand, every telecom play, uh, player charging per minute, we said that in this case, why do we need to charge that way? Why, do we, why can't we charge per second? So by the entire billing proposition is per second. If you talk for 15 seconds, you pay for 15 seconds. You don't pay for a minute. As of June, there are 427 million mobile subscribers growing at 48% year on year. While that means there is a lot of potential, market share will be hard fought, especially in urban markets where penetration levels are as high as 90%. New players are typically looking to capitalize on churn and those people seeking a second SIM card. The value proposition, disruptive technology, in addition to strong branding and marketing are being tried out. One of the big needs, for example, which we addressed was uh, really rewarding usage in a simple manner. So we had the innovative uh, uh, one, two, three minute dynamic uh, local calling which we had introduced. We had segmented offers. Uh, we introduced a whole new conversation around uh, you know, the uh, internet on the mobile with something like pocket internet. The biggest challenge really is a really great customer experience, which is not the day of launch customer experience, but a sustainable customer experience. So every touch point what I do, I need to orchestrate it really, be very clear what I'm offering, and I'm 100% sure that in spite of being the 10th or 11th, what have you, there is a market and we're already seeing that. The fifth largest advertiser category on television, telecom brands are increasing their marketing budgets. With parity on network coverage and pricing, innovations in the service are driving marketing. Globally, mobile operators run multiple campaigns every single month. But beneath that are a variety of tariff plans and BAS plans targeting specific segments and geographies. For big players, the challenge is perhaps different. They are on a different stage of the curve. And for them, geographical expansion, creating a strong loyalty program, ensuring that new age stuff like data services, GPRS, mobile emails, all that becomes a norm for their subscriber, at least high-end subscriber. So for, the, for them, the challenge is what else, what more, where else? Whereas for the new player, it is about why me? And that is a challenge that I think uh, would be different for different players. As of July, Bharti Airtel was the market leader in the GSM space, followed by Vodafone, BSNL, Idea, Aircel, Reliance, MTNL and Loop Mobile. But the real challenge will come with number portability early next year. Brand loyalty will be the only thing that will keep subscribers in the fold. No one's revealing much, but you can bet they are on high alert. All operators, including IDEA, are gearing up in this direction to look at it, look at it as an opportunity and also uh, plug the gaps that may be there and really sharpen the saw, as they say, in the areas where we are ahead of uh, curve, ahead of competitors. I think uh, there will be a challenge of uh, really being uh, relevant and engaging to stand out in the, the, you know, the media clutter. That's a, it's a challenge. I think uh, we will uh, see greater customization for various segments. 
that's the second thing which will happen. Uh, improved levels of uh, consumer service for various segments once again uh, to really cater to the different uh, needs which are there. UAE-based Ethisal RDB is already getting a team in place to launch in India and Unitech Wireless, in which Norwegian major Telenor has a majority stakeholding, may launch in Mumbai soon. All this, along with a much-awaited 3G spectrum rollout, will mean the telecom brands are going to be on their toes. In Mumbai, Shweta Sriram. On message board next, reality show Rakhi Ka Swamwork has given NDTV Imagine the best ratings it has ever seen at 8.4 for the finale. NDTV Imagine closed the week with 141 GRPs, which is its highest ever, but it still remains at number 4. Star Network's Channel B is going in for a revamp starting August 22nd, so expect a new look, new BJs and fresh programming. The programming mix will be less music skewed and it will be 35% non-music show, 65% music. The idea is to make the channel more profitable and also go up in the ratings. Remember, it's currently struggling at number three. We do believe that this particular revamp will give us a discontinuous jump in terms of uh, our market share. And we do believe that uh, this gives us the ability to connect with a much wider audience. It takes us to a much wider platform than we have had in the past when we confined ourselves merely to music. Pantaloon's annual independent sale began on 12th August. Independent sales account for roughly 3% of the retailer's annual sales. This year, however, with malls impacted in Pune and Mumbai because of the H1N1 virus scare, the success is in question. We have some impact in Pune, uh, but uh, none of our stores are closed except for one store in Pimpri. Uh, I think all the stores are operating. We are seeing decent business, not, but not we are not seeing crowds as uh, what we normally see, but normally this uh, five-day event or a four-day event is not as uh, big as the 26th January event which we do, but we are still expecting a sale of around 250 crores and uh, whatever our yesterday's number suggests, we are on track. Coming up next, the impact the Microsoft Yahoo deal will have on online ad spends. Durian, India's largest selling imported furniture brand presents the Durian 4-Day Freedom Sale. 